morning from the ENCA Money Desk. Now, the medium-term budget policy statement will be delivered this afternoon, and our team is already setting up in Cape Town to bring you that news. Now, it's being described as the most politically contentious speech as it comes ahead of elections next year. Now, for more on this, let's talk to Kevin Lings, who is Chief Economist at Standup. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's start just with a brief explainer of what the medium-term budget policy statement is. It's not a budget per se. That's right, hi Melissa. It's not uh, a budget to, to announce tax changes or big expenditure measures. That's uh, kept for the February budget. This, I think, fulfills two main criteria. The one is to give us an update on what's happening to government finances at the middle of the year. That's important to know how we're progressing. And obviously, up until now, uh, there has been some deterioration, so that's going to be a focus. The other issue is to explain to, to the public what government intends to do over the next three years. That's the primary focus of it. It's a medium term. It's a three-year outlook. And it's supposed to guide business, guide investors about what government intends to do over the next three years with regards to various policy measures, government expenditure, uh, where they're going to get their money from, all of those key parameters. So it's a vital, it's become a vital document. It's an impressive uh, exercise. Many countries don't do this. They simply wait for an annual budget. They don't provide an interim update. So South Africa provides a huge amount of information about how we're doing in terms of our fiscal parameters but it's become a critical thing to focus on to understand where government finance is at. Let's talk about government expenditure. It, it needs to be cut back. But it's also a balancing act, for example, cutting back on salaries, but not necessarily cutting back on critical infrastructure projects, which could boost growth and job creation. Yeah, so government is overspending. So government's going to announce... Um, the extent to which they now uh, are going to be overspending relative to the February budget, uh, and it's probably in the order of 20, 30 billion rand, so a sizable overspend, and immediately the focus is going to be how does government rein in that expenditure. Um, we don't want government to cut back on critical infrastructure. Already over the years, government has reduced its infrastructure programs. That's to the detriment of the long-term growth of this country. Uh, you wouldn't want to see more of that. In fact, there's not that much more government can cut because they've already done that. Mm. So the other areas, salaries, yes. I mean, obviously, we got a huge salary bill. Difficult to see that happening in an election year, right? So... There's a lot that government could do. Uh, I doubt they're going to announce those sorts of measures. Government does allow for, for natural attrition out of the workforce and not replace individuals. So it's indicating that it's only going to hire people if it's a critical post. So there's some of that happening. It could do that more extensively, but as I say, in an election year, probably not. Social grants, very difficult to cut. Once you've introduced them, very difficult or near impossible to rein those back. So you've got to try and control the total cost of that. The other areas, spending on travel, spending on conferences, government is saying they're cleaning that up a bit. So in total, Yes, if government is willing to make the big decisions, if it's willing to restructure the size of the cabinet, merge government departments, look at the municipal and provincial structure, there's probably a lot they can do, but I doubt they're going to make those sorts of announcements as you go into an election year. Mm. So I'm not sure that we're going to get a huge effort, a tangible effort to restructure government expenditure. Mm. Now, one of the biggest concerns, Kevin, is obviously falling tax, re tax revenue and collection. And if that could possibly lead to tax increases for South Africans in February, what do you expect? So, so revenues behind budget, it's not every single category. There's some categories where tax revenue appears to be holding up. For example, individual income tax, that's actually not doing too bad. Uh, the, the main areas where it's fallen behind is company tax. And, and you can understand that. We had two years of spectacular corporate tax revenue in the mining sector because of commodity prices. It's not the same environment. Uh, commodity prices have come off. And so that tax revenue is now well behind budget. There's some other areas where we're not collecting because the economy is weak. So government's probably going to have 
in the order of 60 billion rand uh, revenue shortfall. That is significant. Uh, will it lead to tax hikes? We, we don't think so because um, when we look at the tax, the tax rates, they're already high in South Africa. They really do quite a lot of damage to, to economic growth. It's very difficult to increase taxes from f- further from here. So it, it's a question, it's going to come down to this, and that is we need to grow this economy faster. If you want to collect more tax revenue, you've got to lift economic growth. You've got to get rid of the infrastructure constraints. If you get the growth rate going from 1% to 2 3%, Your tax revenue will improve significantly. If you get more employment, your tax revenue will improve significantly. So the realistic focus has to be how the hell do we grow the economy faster? How do we create jobs? How do we broaden the tax base? Increasing taxes at this stage is just simply going to be counterproductive. You're going to collect initially a little bit more money, but the the act of increasing taxes will further weaken the economy and you're, not, and you're just going to go backwards. It's not the answer. Tax levels are already way too high. The focus has to be grow the economy.